Hello, everybody, and welcome to Speak Out, the Outright Podcast. I'm your host, JQ. You can use any pronouns for me. I'm Emma. I use they, she, he pronouns. And I'm Grayson, and I use he, him pronouns. And I'm August, and I use he, him pronouns. What's up? Fantastic. Extremely well. <laughs> that. Just so, planned. I figure first things first, we should do, you know, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself. What, who you are? <laughs> no, we're actually, we're mysterious. Yeah. We're I like to be mysterious, so I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually that's Take way too much information <laughs> about me. Please be kind. Be really <laughs> <laughs> um, we're a band, the two of us. We're Royal Fools. Um, we're both bi dudes. <laughs> um, and we very much so, we talk about a lot of queer issues and topics in our music. We center a lot of our music around being queer. And um, we were raised in a very queer, not community, community, no, but like, <laughs> but like, but like <laughs> um, and it, we have an older sibling and they're gay. And so we were always kind of raised around queer ideas and stuff. Our first ever concert we went to was Lady Gaga. So quite an intro, <laughs> um, but no, yeah. So um, we've always very much so centered queer stories and our queerness ourselves and our music. And yeah, cool. You said that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's always hard to like cut in, you know. <laughs> but I guess as part of that, do you feel like you express queerness like only through lyrics, or is there like? I think like... through lyrics. Yes. One of the other things, like a lot of times, through our lyrics. One of the things that's important to me. I um, I'm a photographer, videographer. It's like my day job, and um, so our visuals are really, really important to me. And one of the things is, musically, I would say we lean toward, like, alt-rock, um, yeah. but okay. with our themes and our imagery, I really like playing off of punk themes, and that's sort of a reclamation of what, I, punk, was. what punk used to be. And I feel like in a lot of, um, because even though we're alt-rock, we end up being looped in with a lot of punk people, and, um... And we love the punk scene. We love the we're punk scene. We're obsessed with punk. One of my it's issues... So <laughs> <laughs> one of my issues with the punk scene, though, is I do feel like, um... It's well, like, historically, it's right been now. taken over by cis straight white men, and in punk spaces that we've been invited in, it's, like, situations where we're, like, talking to people... And then they'll like whip out slurs, and it's like, oh my god, this is not what <laughs> punk is. This is not what punk means. You have no fucking yeah. idea. You and don't we know. get to pass as one of them, so we, they are comfortable with us, and they don't know how uncomfortable or how like outcast from the scene we can feel, which can be really difficult. But um, that's well, obviously, it's like lucky that we get. To. Yes, <laughs> we're we're lucky that we get to to not have to do and come forward. It's really lucky that bigots have absolutely no thoughts behind their brains because they can't read our lyrics and think. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that up. <laughs> but then I also think musically, we're actually like weirdly inspired by queerness, not directly. I mean, like weird queer. That sounded awful. <laughs> For sure. Back, back. Um, go back. We'll read our most recent print. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like a lot of our musical taste was really defined by us, like, being in the queer community at, like, 13, 14, when we're just mm -hmm. getting into high school, and we had... Which, to be fair, at that time, I feel like, did not center queer artists. Yes. It more so centered a lot of, like, straight white men that queer kids called babies. So. And, like, with queer babies. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. <laughs> but it did mean that, like, I think... Because really what happened for us, finding our queerness and finding like where we belong in our lives and finding music, was through us being in love with a bunch of bands that a lot of other queer kids were into. And then we got... And building communities off of the queer people yeah. we were meeting in these fan bases. So it was mainly that connection that allowed us to, to bridge into becoming musicians and becoming comfortable and being queer. Because it was, it was a big hurdle to, to find that out and, like, work through that. It was, it was really difficult. We didn't have support at home. And we came out here to get away and to have, like, that comfort. Com comfort. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is why you're talking. <laughs> but, yeah, so I just think music and queerness for us is inherently locked. And inherently a together idea. Yeah, you had, I, you I had like a just great stopped. line and you just, <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> <laughs> I just left it where it lay. 
Yeah, you guys have got the whole 21 pilots thing going on. <laughs> Everyone knows. Oh, Everyone knows. You <laughs> caught it from the get, and that's the issue. It was, a, it was a, on, the, on the preliminary scale of the Instagram. I got that. <laughs> yeah. No, we've been leaning into it because, I mean, a lot of starting out being queer and finding our queer people was around 21 pilots. Our 21 pilots fan account. Uh. <laughs> Our yeah. Well, so no, normal. okay. Well, because we started, we started in the fan account. We're like, got worse. Oh, <laughs> I ran a very successful Minecraft account. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but um, no, but we started there, and then we were on all of those strange little accounts in like 2014 that were like a bunch of queer admins, and all of you were like, mm -hmm. "My name is August, and my pronouns are he, him." And then you just talk about like your life, and, and then like, and you're like 14, girls. and then you have like fangirls hitting up your. I don't remember. It's like like Cupid something they had like the secret private the anonymous thing where you could send like anonymous messages oh my God. Yes. yes and I had like I had like like 12 year olds being like daddy and I'd be like 14 and be like <laughs> Like, the queer admin goes crazy. <laughs> yeah, the amount of people that you'd meet, and, like, you'd be, like, 14 on an account with a 28-year-old, and just be like, oh, this That's is my so best cool. friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting very, like, kick. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Idea, yeah. God, that's the queer experience of 2014. <laughs> um, 2014 is too young. I was 11. Um, 2016. 16, 17 was our yeah. heyday. Yeah. It's yeah. truly, though, what a year to be insane. <laughs> what a year to be queer. <laughs> God. So when gay marriage was legalized? Oh my when god. I, when gay marriage That's was legalized. That's such a funny thing when to say. Okay. <laughs> when gay marriage was legalized, we were at our Republican friend's house, but we were like young enough <laughs> oh that we didn't really gosh. get that. And then we woke up and my fucking brother texted in our group chat like gay marriage was just legalized. But we were at, at this Republican's house. The dad is stomping around. He's like pissed. And we didn't know why. We really like didn't get this. Yeah, it just didn't make sense to us. It didn't click. And we were just like, the dad was like really pissed. So then like my, my friend let, her dad was like so out of it and like so upset that he let us drive a golf cart around the entire property. No. <laughs> they were rich Republicans. Yeah. But then, I got in trouble like a couple years later because I didn't know it was their house. I stole their Trump sign and they got me like in trouble with the Because I posted it on Instagram. Yeah, he posted me wow. stealing the Trump sign on Instagram. But, but then also. Then I went home and I edited on like a little photo app a picture of a pride flag. A picture of Tyler Oakley, <laughs> a picture of this Hannah so Hart, and somebody else. This is like a period. Piece. Yeah, yes. it's horrible. <laughs> and I can't find mine either because I had like the bathroom symbols of two girls next to each other, two boys next to each other, and a gay pride flag that says "Love Wins." And I posted it on my main Instagram, and I was That's... straight. I was straight. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, There's like no more allies. No more allies. <laughs> Like, they should have like rights and stuff, yeah. not anything more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And then and I had um because we were looking through trying to find old Twenty One Pilots art to make like a TikTok of and and I was looking through and I was like my mom didn't think something was up. I have like eighteen pictures I drew a hand drawn of boys kissing. <laughs> Editing boys kissing each other and being like, yeah, and you're 21 Pilots fan fiction. Oh, I did write a gay smutty fan fiction about 21 Pilots. Absolute That's respect. the truth of the matter. Go off, King. This is, this is saved forever. This is internet archives. No, yeah, I really yep. do. Yeah. For the sake of journalistic integrity, I cannot edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, you know. you can edit out the lesbian Shut note. Oh, my God. <laughs> Emma has I'm so mad at the lesbian mean? boat show. Okay. Emma Are you being pitched... mean to them? I'm yes. actually mean to them, yeah. <laughs> Emma has been pitching a reality sh dating show where it's it was lesbians on Ava's a boat idea. for three weeks now. Right. It was mostly Ava's idea. <laughs> Wait, is there anything else than lesbians on the boat? Oh, they play banjos? Oh! oh. <laughs> I just want to watch lesbians exactly. on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe. It wasn't even mostly my idea. I'm just, they just up. happened to tell me that it, they, it got edited out, so now I'm going to bring it up in every episode. <laughs> God. Now I, I had to say something really good to keep it in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm wild that 21 Pilots is still having a new album. I'm sorry. I know we're here to talk about you guys. No, but it's insane. Really just like just now. Just now. Like and April, I'm really, I think. And like 
we're we're like trying to catch this high where everyone's like obsessed with them. And I was like talking to this girl who's like super obsessed with them, and she's like so into Twenty One Pilots. And I was just like saying, yeah, I was a really big fan, but like I kind of dropped off like trench. I was like after yeah. a huge hiatus, I was like. I'm older, and I don't like them, because I was, like, up my ass, and, like, I was, like, going through it, and I was, like, talking to this girl about it, and she was, like, 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 I said, like, but Scaled and Icy was bad, and I didn't like any of those songs, so I, like, was, okay, but I was, like, talking about that, and she was, like, it was supposed to be bad, it was part of the script, and I was, like, and I was, like, okay, but I want good That's music. That's how they <laughs> Say it's in a genre or style, but they didn't intentionally make bad music. <laughs> God. I can't. And they're back. Their lyrics are worse. <laughs> I think he's too happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I think you have to be so sad to make good music. Every time I'm too happy, I'm like, No, I haven't it. written in months. I think I'm doing well. <laughs> um, and I was like, this summer? Oh my God. Best songs of my life. <laughs> I was like true. making art like crazy. It yeah. was so good. And I was just like blown away by the power of my mind. And then it's like, ew, you're comfortable with your friend group? Bench! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I do feel like art is so important as a way to like purge life though, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I think if I, oh, if I had nothing... I don't know what they do. I get so confused. I have like like all, a bunch of my straight guy friends. I just look at it and I'm just like... Are you, like, feeling better when you, like, play a bunch of, of, like, smash? Like, are you, like, are you, like, purging those emotions? Like, how are you getting, like, one of my friends was, like, telling me about, like, this terrible, like, situationship that went on and off and that he was, like, super hurt by and she was, like, telling him that she was, like, really, like, felt for him and that she really cared for him and then she'd be, like, off the grid the next week and then he was just, like... Yeah, I just, like, played a lot of Smash. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And you felt okay. better? <laughs> that work? I feel like playing video games, I only do it when I'm like, I want to feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it's for. <laughs> that's, that's what I often do. I just sit and play video games whenever I'm just like, feel it. Feel it. <laughs> <laughs> You're driving yourself down the yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we can get more on the topic of your music. Cause no, I think we just leave now. Yeah, we're done. Get out of here. want us here. I think music for us has been very interesting because because we really only, like, because people in music, they tend to focus on love, right? And love as a queer person is automatically, like, going to be weirder like of a interest. weirder situation. And I think in general, person's... all all queer relationships, no matter if they're, like, like, heterosexual like in nature i think queerness adds a layer to it where there is like a lot more that can be said for it my point is like having yeah, i'm trying I, to follow yeah like, i'm in your you brain know, i'm not like, ignore him I'm yeah. like, <laughs> you're like, lucky it's okay <laughs> like especially my i have always felt significantly closer to and and like, drawn to women and queer people as my close friends. I don't have a lot of straight male friends. I don't really trust straight men off the bat. I think that, that I have a lot of, of trauma with that and a lot of people who have wronged me with that. And moving into college and having primarily female relationships means that you're going to have inherently different relationships with the women around you especially as someone who is bisexual and can be like perceived in that way it, there has been a lot of times where i felt like objectified or like <laughs> like, like trying to follow like it. like like in in a friend group where you're there's mostly women and you're you're bisexual then women feel a lot more comfortable objectifying you and making you out to be like not someone that they respect as much. So I've had issues with women disrespecting me in that way. And also, I think being queer, and especially in LA, with men, there's always this this weird toss-up where you're, like, playing still because you, you've you been taught your entire life to be, like, masculine and dap each other up and stuff. And it's like, switching. you're code-switching, but you never know, especially with other queer men 
when that line stops. Because this is how I interact with men. I know how to interact with men. But then I go up and I'm like, you're queer, so I don't have to. But I'm also like, like you know, you've got all these layers to it that I think makes all relationships and all like love stuff more interesting in, in queer love songs and queer music. Because you there's always a complexity. And it's not, it's just, it. I just feel like straight people have this, like, like, like such a such a distinct view of relationships and love that I cannot relate to and I find myself always like latching on to queer artists for that reason because their the style of heterosexual love does not feel at all relatable to me. Does that make sense, August? <laughs> <laughs> Are you it's happy with this answer? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but that's another thing. We're good. I was worried. <laughs> no, that makes sense. It, it's yeah. like it's like yeah. I think that's been talked about probably on here when we talked about the queer music episode. Um, that was something. Yeah, we did this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not crazy. Um, in the sense that, like, as a queer person, you already exist outside of the traditional norms of sexuality and sometimes gender, and so it's uh, even easier to not have to. Well, not always easy, but tends. Queer people tend to fall outside of, like, traditional gender roles uh, in the sense that they, like, sometimes don't have to, you know, there's, like, conf complexity there, but, you know, not, already being outside of the norm means that it's even easier to not have to fall into, like, those norms and those roles that are already so, like, cemented and, like, honestly, kind of overplayed and boring. Mm. Yeah. And then, because the love part's inherently going to be interesting, always, with queer relationships but then also one thing that is important to us is also like not just making every song about love stuff because I feel like a lot of music is and it can get boring and I think that a lot of our music has to do with just that um it's a lot about home and it's a lot about what that means and I think especially queer I mean people, yeah especially as a community moving from like we're from the middle of nowhere in Massachusetts more like, cows and people <laughs> like and it's like it's liberal it's Massachusetts but like it's also the middle of it's nowhere. the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah, so you're yeah. gonna get a lot more like Trumpies and like we're right on the border of New Hampshire and they're that super makes, sorry that makes the golf cart thing way weird <laughs> yeah, <now. laughs> yeah no golf we, they were not at a golf yeah. course yeah. They, 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 court, court I just said golf court <laughs> I'm really into sports. <laughs> no, they had like a weird farm situation happening. I think that was the intention of the golf cart there, because a, a large majority of the people back home would at least own chickens, if not a whole farm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, so you you had like the there was never like but like moving from there to LA. We write a lot about like moving west and like kind of getting out. And, and west has always been something for us in our music. We always like to tr chalk down things that we talk about in like every song. Parents, West, cigarettes. That's pretty much <laughs> like, oh, like Taylor yeah. Swift's Midnight's thing. Oh, I really, I have my words. Um, but like, it's it's a big thing for us, and coming out here makes it really cemented in our our like brains of like eras in our lives. It doesn't feel like one cohesive life, really, because it it's everything changed when we got out here. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But, but, um... Which... That's what I like to call the L.A. wildfire. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. <laughs> nice. And the lesbian boats don't... Goats? For boats? What? <laughs> New show, Lesbian Goats. Oh, <laughs> woo. I was yeah, on a farm. Views, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, also, we were, like, lesbian greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. The goats. Oh, okay, I see. Even and Tom Brady is still at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Lesbian goats. Julian Baker. I was yeah. seeing oh, Julian Baker. Off oh my god, I have this one picture of her. Oh my god. <laughs> you should look through his phone. Yeah, it's the okay, one where yeah. she's dressed as Jesus. Jesus. I was at, I was at that yeah, concert. Yeah. I was at that I one. I wasn't even there. Okay. I was helping his girlfriend picture. vomit. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to miss on. it. <laughs> well, because he's... He... Go on. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, he's go doing fucking poppers in the stands of the Hollywood Bowl. And I'm trying to fucking take care of everyone. I'm the designated driver. It was There's five gex. drunk people. <laughs> it was a hundred gecks. It was a hundred gecks. Boy genius. It, the queer people going crazy. None of the boy genius yeah. people got what we were doing. Oh, we were thrashing out there. <laughs> but, no. I, I, I think 
that's that wait i that's what i wanted to get back to lesbian goats we all get one right? we all get one i think that's what you make it first it's really grandma you guys if there's four goats, I don't know why, but in my head there were always four. So yeah, each of okay. us, you have lesbian goat. It doesn't have to be a musician. No. Okay, It's great. your lesbian. Leslie Feinberg. Okay. What oh. if I said Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> no! No! no. I would have... actually have we to... We would actually have to leave. Yeah. I know a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> that would be our one sensible moment. Look, just be me then. I have a favorite say, lesbian, though. No, no, I'm better than Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, okay. Fair. Who is your favorite lesbian? Riley. Oh, you can't name a friend. That's not fair. <laughs> Riley well, tells me what to wear. No, that's yes. my sister. Um, um, okay, <laughs> celebrities only lesbians. <laughs> Emma, do you have a lesbian prepared? <laughs> <laughs> prepared? Fuck, oh, no, I don't. I didn't study. I didn't study. I just like, shit. Um, <laughs> and then you get Ellen. <laughs> Your name. Ellen. You said Ellen. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> fucking edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> On quote. Um, I'm still thinking about one. I mean, I feel like I probably have to say Haley Kiyoko for at least one of them. Mm. Um, oh god. I had a bit Let's in our live show we played Determinate by Lemonade Mouth, oh. and it started out, and I started... I did the rap, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so all my glad. friends, because we were really stressed because we thought it was going to get shut down, and we were, like, really stressed about the venue and everything the day before our release show, and I was like, I'm just really sad because I worked really hard on that rap, and my friend stopped me and said, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and I was like, it's not, I'm not allowed to tell you guys it's supposed to be a surprise, but, like, I do rap, and they were like, this, you can't do that. Like, you're not allowed to do that. And I was like, no, I swear it's fine, but I can't tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, what if I, I think about how horrible it'd be? He goes up there and he's like, this is all right by Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Slow motion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Royal Bulls. No. Adam Hicks. Is what Adam Hicks. But um, yes. I had this whole bit. And I didn't do it because my audience ended up being like a lot of like men and I got really threatened. <laughs> but I, and I, they did not vibe with The boys that didn't vibe with it. All of the girls and the queer people were like singing along and jamming with me. And the guys were literally standing there arms crossed. You can see it in the videos too. And I was like, what the hell? I thought everyone would be fucking with this. And then so I'm singing it. It starts out and then I go, um, this one's for Dr. Bridget fucking Mendler. And then we do the whole thing. And then at the end, I was supposed to say, or no, I was supposed to say at some point, I was supposed to be like, how many STEM girlies we got out there? That was for Bridget Mendler. How many lesbians we got out there? That was for Haley Kiyoko. <laughs> that was my go-to. But then I got scared. <laughs> they get so scary when the audience is out there. I, August did uh, the same thing. You were going to yell at somebody at our Moroccan lounge show. Mm, you yeah. had a whole bit where you were going to... I had a whole gonna... bit where if my bow tie was undone and somebody didn't correct me, I would make the whole audience scream, Fuck you! But then Grace said I couldn't do that. <laughs> and our manager Well, he also said... made me not do... Um... Okay, because we have this song we're working a lot on, and it's like a newer one, and it's called A Traveler's Conversation with God, and the whole idea is, like, if there's this loving God... And he hates queer people. Why the fuck would he make me queer? Is like the idea of the song, basically. Probably. In like layman's terms, like I made it sound lamer. <laughs> like, for Christ's sake, it's called like Traveler's Conversation with God. <laughs> but it's like this whole big idea of like just like talking to God and like because there's this part at the end and it's like, uh, how does this? It goes, let me talk to him. Let oh, let me talk to him. Let me scream. It isn't fair. Who is he? Let me talk to him. Our song, bro. Yeah, it's our song. <laughs> Unreleased, so we don't have to know the lyrics yet. Um, let me talk to him. Let me nice scream. It's that you're uh, thematically pilot as well, though. <laughs> and, and you know what? We have no religious trauma. We just all we, we reference. Well, God no, we kind of do. Funny. It's funny because we have OCD, both of us. Okay, bad. so funny religious trauma. <laughs> Oh, we were raised atheistic, and then, is that how you say that? Atheist. Yeah. Atheist. I think just oh. stick with that. <laughs> oh. We were raised atheist, and then we were in, like, sixth grade. We started grade. praying to Santa. Yeah, that's not how that works. But and I was like, I'd be like, please, make mommy and daddy not fight. <laughs> it's like, it's like, not Santa d deal. Like, that's not his thing. <laughs> like, let him worry about his thing. So, I, then, <laughs> let him worry about his Zuzu pets and also, shit. by the like, way. Sixth grade, we were still believing in Santa. Um, and then, but, childish whimsy. Yeah, no, no, but whimsy we, we both have OCD. And then what it ended up being was like, if we did anything that we perceived as like 
bad, we would perceive it as like wronging God. So, so, have to, so like, I'd say I'd go apologize. to hell if I swore. I did this till eighth grade. I didn't believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, we would pray every time because we thought we had to like repent for swearing or like saying anything like that. Which, like, nobody taught us to do. We just decided that amongst ourselves. So it's like this really strange religious trauma. And I also, I do feel like I talk a lot about God in our music because I think when there's such, like, a, a large institution that's so anti-queer and it's so present in, like, all of our lives, I feel like that's constantly hanging over my head and kind of serves as, like, a representation for communities that are, like against me and my existence and would just fucking hate me. So I feel like I use that as kind of a vessel a lot to... 21 pilots. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> to God. talk about, like, a lot of stuff like that, but, like... I use it as a blurry face. <laughs> <laughs> it says, let me talk to him, make it clear. This is an anger, this is fear. That was what I was going at. What's that, the next one? Let, let me talk to him. to him. Look at me, keep the noise down, watch me bleed, let me talk to him, take it in. Is this a prayer? Is this a prayer? So funny, when we were doing it live. When we're doing it live... I love, I'm a, I love a big performance. I'm a big performer guy. And the thing is, I was very, 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 I didn't realize this. I was a musical theater kid. <laughs> okay, well, and I didn't realize you never noticed. Listen, listen, listen. 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 I was all of Javert's suicide from Les Mis, but he never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I loved musical theater a lot. And then <laughs> I'm like going up and I'm like, I've always been very rock in my music and I've like always been inspired by that and like working on that and then I would like have all these big performances and I was like I don't know why I just like randomly kind of like did that someday that I just started like performing like that and then I watch I'm a sound tech sometimes very ra rarely anymore but I did sound for what's that Shakespeare musical something rotten and I was watching them perform and I was like hey, that's how I move. <laughs> that's not rock and roll. That's how you guys are moving. I'm just moving like I'm in musical theater. I'm just singing and rock. all the rock guys are like, oh, you really know how to move up there. And it's like, yeah, because musical theater. Yeah, because <laughs> musical theater. <laughs> but, then, but then that song specifically, we were watching back videos of our last performance. And, and then I had, um, we also, while we were in our 21 Pilots 2016, 17 era, I was very obsessed with RuPaul's Drag Race, right? Do you guys know yeah, Red You uh, Wrote You? Sorry? Do you know Red You Wrote You? No. Wow. So you're fake queer. Yeah, so... <laughs> so. I hate to come on you here and show you off on your own show, <laughs> but we are more queer than you. Yeah. Um. Red You Wrote You is a rap that was performed on Drag Race. Drag Race. I think it was season 11, All-Stars. Yes. Sorry, and I can't... I will say and say that you're trying to flex on me about how you have watched Drag Race. <laughs> Okay, okay, listen, it's, listen, we're not pro RuPaul, we're pro drag. <laughs> um, what do you mean? I just love drilling. <laughs> but, um, we were, we watched that religiously, and we had, like, a group of four people that were, like, our closest friends in, like, eighth grade, and in the rap, it's the top four, so they all had, like, a different rap verse, so we all Who took are all them? Who's the bad one? Who, I can't remember. Roxy one? Andrews. I'm Roxy, Roxy Andrews, Andrews, and I'm going to make it clear. I know I you love me, baby. That's, that's why you brought me here. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we, among our little friend group in eighth grade, split the parts between the four of us. I think I got Roxy. You were Roxy. Which was so Because we decided that. you'd be the worst drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, I get it. Um, but... Yeah, we, we were obsessed with this, like, rap. That's the other, everybody thinks he's the fucking straight one, I'm the gay one. I'm like, we're both bi. Like, we're both happily telling that line, but everyone's like, oh yeah, the straight one and I the gay a one. I have twinks right now. <laughs> a harem? <laughs> 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 I'm being told by someone I'm not that. allowed to talk about my harem. <laughs> I love how you're saying by someone. <laughs> someone off camera is coming. Not to go forward with this conversation. Hey, what the fuck are you gonna add? What are you gonna add about your harem of drinks? What's your next topic of conversation there? Don't don't keep going. You can tie it back. <laughs> but um, basically the point was in Detox's verse, which was my verse. She does a slut that drop, detox. Um, but it's a detox drop because she goes D to the E to the T to the O to the whole of X. X, and she and drops. Campbell and these oh, to the crown yeah. next. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but in that, she does that, and then we realized when we were watching back 
um, our last performance, which was at like adults only last Tuesday, we were playing a show and in Traveler's Conversation with God during that part that I was just like saying the lyrics of, um, there's this part and it says, bring the noise down, right? And during that part, I always go like down and I'm supposed to kind of like kneel or like lunge down. It's just a slut drop. Every <laughs> single time it's a slut drop because I'm like down on my knees. And I'm like, oh, wait, okay, so that was drag. <laughs> and then at the end, I was trying to do like um, a fall kind of inspired by 21 Pilots during Heavy Dirty Soul. He has this fall <laughs> and he falls. He's, he's doing exact quotes from 21 Pilots. Yes. Like, during this but song, he <laughs> does this seconds fall. In. I remember specifically because he always hurt his elbow. And I was like, that's weird because I don't hurt my elbow when I fall. You're I was like, yeah. how do I not do that? Yeah. It's because I'm doing a death drop. It's because I'm not doing his fall. I'm doing a death drop every single time. And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm like putting on my leg like a drag queen and falling like that. We also do that at parties when yes. we're like, in, if we're in a dance circle and he just does in a death drop, only the gays and the girlies get what he's even trying to do because men will be like, he fell. Is he okay? Oh, no. And then the girl's like, yeah! <laughs> I'm still like, it fucks me up that people can see a death drop and not be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, you think you do that by accident? No, no, no. <laughs> it's so Well, okay, because also when I'm drunk, it looks a lot less committed, I would say. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's more When I'm performing, I feel like it looks like pretty, like, I'm falling hard. Because, I mean, I'll just take the hits when I'm performing. I'll, like, I run my body dry every time I perform because I'm just, like, slamming it. But then, in, at, like, parties and shit, I'm drunk, and I'm just kind of, like, sloppily going backwards. <laughs> you did it one time. We went, we rented out a drum kit to um, the record label Cherry Pop on campus, and they um, they were having a show, and we came to pick it up, and it was only the Cherry Pop people there, and a lot of them are good friends, so we were, like, hanging out, talking to them, um, and they were, like, doing a dance circle for a minute, and all completely sober, because we were driving to get the drum kit from to their party. We weren't at their party. We just came to get the kit, did a death drop in the middle of a circle of drunk people. So it was just Well, hilarious. it was because they started out, they, I was doing the worm, and then somebody said, run it back so I can film it, and then I was like, okay. So I ran it back once. Somebody asked me to run it back again. I was like, I can't do the same move three times. So then I ran a death drop instead. Of he workout. really only has those two moves. Yes. Don't ask him to get him What are your moves? Times. You do a shitty coffee grinder. I, <laughs> oh, oh. I did that the other day on the floor of the treehouse. So sticky. Like, no. like, like, I put my hands down, it went. Yeah. <laughs> it was, ew, ew. I was, I was regretting it for the rest of the night. I poured beer on my hand to try to oh fix my it. God. <laughs> and the bathroom line is incredible, so it's like not worth it. So I was just like, that's all I can do. <laughs> that's, that's all, folks. <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day, though, because my, my girlfriend was talking to me about some of her friends, and they were like, she called me, and then they, like, heard my voice on the phone, and they were like, oh, he's, like, gay. He's not mysterious. And I was like, <laughs> you're, like, trying to be mysterious? Yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm not very mean? interested, because we are starting to get a little reputation on campus, and I'm very interested when we come up to people, if we were, like, as they expected. I talk a lot more than people expect. Because yeah, because when you go to shows, he doesn't say a word. Because he doesn't have a I mic. I get scared on the microphone, and I'm playing instruments. So <laughs> I'm busy. busy. Yeah. And, and then I always, like, whenever I do, like, he was, like, taking sips of water, and I'd be like, never do that on stage, because it scares the shit out of me. I go up and I told him he has to just talk about, like, merch or socials or something very palatable for so him. I'm, just, like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, guys, you like the songs we're playing? <laughs> Did, was it good? I tried really hard. <laughs> Because it's weird, because I, like, everyone who knows us in real life knows that I'm, like, the quieter one by far. But then, if you would ever see us live, you expect him to be, like, the complete, like, shy, silent one. And I'm, like, this big talker. I'm not a big talker in real life. He's always the big talker. I feel like it's not fair to say you're not a big talker. I'm a big talker. You're just less of a big talker. Compared to him, I am, like, a mouse versus an elephant. That was songwriter. 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 I want something about cigarettes in your game. Caught folks too every time. It's it, we had we had this one song that really started strong. Secondhand smoke. It starts with Do I smell like cigarettes? Do my folks know? One, two, hit them. <laughs> <laughs> every single fucking one. Just dry them out. Slime. Yeah, yeah, no. That's a, what is, what, we have to say something about it. I'm scanning. No, I don't remember secondhand smoke good enough. We have so many fucking songs. That's the other thing is because we're finally like working on releasing stuff and like getting stuff out. We've been writing since the beginning of high school, mostly shitty things, but like good songs. We have like 
pretty finished, like, 50 songs right now. Mm, and we're, like, shit. just kind of, like... But we have to get in the studio, and every time we're in the studio, I do each instrument one at a time. If each instrument takes a four-hour mm. session, I'm doing at least, like, at minimum tracks on a release song, 80 with, I think, the smaller one. Um, like, it's a lot of instruments yeah, I'm usually a doing, like, 30 different I takes for vocals. I tell him to just take, take a couple takes and pick the best one, and you're not going to get a perfect take, because you're never going to get a perfect take, but he just won't do it. So he I sits down, <laughs> and he gets down there, and he, and he goes through, like, 30 different tracks, and I don't get my laptop when he's doing that, because we only have Pro Tools on one of my, my, only my computer, so he just takes my laptop for days on end. It's terrible. It's cruel. <laughs> uh, he's doing it on purpose to hurt me. <laughs> we're gonna have an evil band breakup, and we're gonna write books about how evil the other. That's what I think is so funny. What is he gonna do? Band breakup? We already did the like, like we've we've been through shit, like going back and forth and like having issues with each other, and we came out. We're fine. And then he came <laughs> <laughs> I said no, it. but that's one of the things is like why we wanted to just be a band of the two of us is because we just like so wholeheartedly trust each other to be able to And our be experience there. is so us. And yeah. we get each other like nobody else can and it's like they're the people that I do really love and I think could add a lot to our music would just would add a flavor of themselves that I think would make it less true to what we're speaking to. Cause like it's like like a less concentrated image. I yes, guess. like we and like, you know, everyone has their own like agendas and and communities and like what that means to them and how that influences their music. And if we want our concentrated like vibe, I think just working with the two of us like makes the most sense. And especially with the two of us, I think our history with being queer and also our queerness is like, kind of the number one point of our music. Because a lot of times in, like, we're music industry students and stuff, and so a lot of times in class we'll talk about, like, what people, like, focus on, like, what an artist's, like, goal is and what their, like, message is. And the thing is, it's, like, the thing that we want to stand for is, like, queer kids and making sure queer kids can, like, grow up safely and shit. And so... I have a personal goal of being extremely, extremely hot and not being, like, one of those ooh like, queer people, I feel like queer men are often, like, put into the, ooh, ooh, cute, and I hate that, so I want to be hot and awesome. That's, like, <laughs> like, like, like sexualized, but not objectified, because that sucks. Um, not fetishized, either. So, so a couple just things, hot. Like, also, <laughs> just hot. Um, so. yeah, but, like, a lot of our, our topics, I feel like, hinder a lot around, like, American masculinity and like finding masculinity within queerness and kind of finding that level where we can still I mean it's like we were extremely we hated queerness for pretty much the first two and a half three years of college I oh, college, high school high school, high school. <laughs> um, but like because over like we wanted to quarantine is where I really came to terms with it we wanted it to like, go to West Point was like our dream was school in high school and it was just um the American masculinity that's burned into you that you are not enough of a man. And it's over and over again being, like, pushing myself to be better and more masculine. And we kind of always felt this this strong need to kind of, like, make up for our queerness and, like, kind of contribute to male spaces and kind of be, like, accepted by these male spaces. Whereas, it's like, I know a lot of my queer friends who just kind of sank into the queer spaces and got to stay in, like, kind of that si- Space, which obviously isn't because we really safe, we we but... went to the queer spaces when we were young, and then we left them, and we said that we were like that's cringe. I can't do that. But I can't like be a part of that. It means more to me to be perceived better by straight cis people than it does to be accepted by because that's what we thought like success looked like for us was being accepted in like the straight cis world. And I think that's something that, honestly, we're still combating, and it's like... Stuff... And there's, there's so much of my personality that was built upon that 14-year-old who would, like, like do the, like, stupid things that I didn't want to do, like, join the military, and I, like... You said started... you joined the military at 14? Yeah, when I joined the military at 14, <laughs> and, like, 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 I wanted to, like, play all these sports and join the military and, like, be, like, like like, very muscular and very masculine, and it's just, it's all based in insecurity, and I, I, like, was so close to falling down the alt-right pipeline of, like, 
like the Calvin Guerra, like the the queer people who would but like even like further them. than that because you'd go down that and then you'd go into like I really like video games. I was like a fourteen year old boy. I wanted to play video games and then I'd watch video game content on YouTube and then and it's like you get Leafy is here and then you get deeper and you're like yeah. oh you're getting to people and you get those like things. like those people. It's like feminist owned videos start going to like mm-hmm. these long lectures and it was like I was like so close to that pipeline and being right next to it and adjacent to it and having people that I loved and cared about go into that was like a big part of making me just so incredibly insecure that I hopped on anything to make my ego bigger. So like joining the military and like we wanted to start an ROTC at our school. We wanted to do that. We wanted to start it. Like it was like there's just like a lot about masculinity that will always be affected by and I don't think we'll ever fully heal from and I'm like finally getting to the point where I'm more comfortable with like more feminine things like I was in plays in high school and I would like be like nobody's fucking touching me with like makeup like I'm not like I don't care stage makeup whatever like all the other boys are wearing it I'm not fucking wearing it like that's not I'm not gonna do that and it's like a lot is just things to unlearn and like understand and there was like just really like you you like we didn't have like a non like like a homophobic school or anything like we we were pretty like in a, in a liberal area with liberal people it was just we that, faced like shit for it but yeah. not not evil shit necessarily. yeah <laughs> and it wasn't like it was like it was out of the norm for people being assholes and then but like it's still that kind of like thing where it would define you so if people know you're queer and know you're there it's not it's not like it's just treated like normal it is something but it's just not bullied like actively yeah. as yeah. as it like, like would be mm-hmm. yeah and it's like we august served as the popular girl token for a good minute I was never really close with them. I was getting in with seniors who would smoke cigarettes right in the middle of the lunchroom. <laughs> and August made, like, his popular girl rounds where they'd just be like, this is my token. We they were like, we want to teach you the rules of football. And I was like, I know them, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was. It was like, he's close. so cute and queer. And I was like. Cool. <laughs> they called me carrots because a girl tried to throw carrots to her friend at the That's lunch. That's so <laughs> unrelated. They called me carrots because someone threw a bag of carrots on my head. <laughs> they, him, they nailed him in the middle. It was like a like a balcony lunchroom. So they nailed him in the middle of the head in the middle of the lunchroom. And like she got like scolded and like dragged to the principal's office for throwing it too. I didn't uh, report her. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. I was a proud he's a carrots. <laughs> yeah, he's a proud token. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never do that to her. Um, but then what, Caesar Salad? Yeah, Caesar yeah. Salad, which was the stupidest nickname. Like, Augustus, Augustus Caesar, Caesar Salad. Oh, it was Croutons. croutons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was, his name was Croutons. Wow, I had to take like three different <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I didn't get nicknames like that, though. Damn, I wish I was token on. <laughs> <laughs> People in middle school would call me Shelby, uh, and I fucking hated it because they thought I looked like someone who would be named <laughs> Shelby. That was like, the reason I were like, Damn, don't right? kill yourself. <laughs> <Really? laughs> I get so protective now because, like, my name's August, but so many people will call me Og, and I love it when my close friends call me Og, and, I like, no that. one beyond that all circle. All I'm like, you don't fucking know me like Og. <laughs> <laughs> so he got super insecure in high school when I, um, was talking to one of my friends, and, like, he did not know August at all. And I was like, I talk about Og all the time, my twin Og, and he was like, How's that spelled? O O G. Okay, first of all, that's new. That's new for sure. I was like, I was like, I guess I've never said his full name in front of you. <laughs> but no. Also, people are freaked out that his full name's Augustus. Yeah, because it's, like, Cause it's kind of weird. Cause it's like August, August I guess, is the nickname, but it's like that doesn't really feel like a like nickname. freshman year. Someone was outside our dorm, being like Grayson and Aug. Aug. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Do you know my full name? <laughs> Grayson and Augustus, and they were like, I just would never have guessed that those would have been your full names. And I was like, never would have guessed. Gray <laughs> <laughs> and August, you never would have guessed. <laughs> I was like, if I had to walk out <laughs> and guess your name, yeah. what would you guess? Would oh, what would your guess be? I don't know. What would you guess? Well, now I need to think about mm-hmm. this. Um, 
Honestly, I'm I mean, you're not for like a Zach. You're guessing. Like, <laughs> you're a Zach. Yeah, you put me as a Zach. I thought you were just naming. He can be a Zach. You think I'm a Zach? Oh, I'm shit. literally I'm just based on age and name commonness. <laughs> no <laughs> way! <laughs> you're, 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 you're doing it like a technical version yeah, of it. Yeah, they're like <laughs> a history and econ major. Jesus Christ, of nerd! Yeah, <laughs> smart People shit. don't name their kids based on how they'll look later. <laughs> I would. Hey, I would look at that baby and say your yes. Baby you name it. <laughs> you can vibe check your baby and the vibe can be wrong. You can <laughs> incorrectly know. vibe check your baby. Fucking figure it out. Like, I be better. Your You're not locked in, bro. Like, <laughs> just figure it out. Me and my kid, we're gonna be like getting each other dog, like beyond the yes, Victorian right. child way where it's like, if you live past eight, I'll give you a <laughs> 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 Uh, ask you history. Name, I don't know. <laughs> you would name your kid, but you wouldn't like present them to society until they were like a little present bit older. Yeah, you don't let them outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> One day I, I hope to go like, outside and breathe the smog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I posted a video where I said if I was a Victorian child. And, and from the 1800s, you could feed hot Cheetos and laugh. Would you like me more? And, like, on all of our social media, except... Like, we didn't post it yet on anything. But on YouTube Shorts, I did post it. And a bunch of people just said, yes, yes. And the comments were flooded by just, like, <laughs> like I would have liked that? you I mean, more. I do think it's really funny, just, though. Because people, <laughs> if they're trying to, like, shit on our music, they'll comment shit like, like, go back to your day job. My day job is a photo video guy, and his day job is sound engineering. They're all <laughs> bullshit, to be clear. None of it's, like, real. <laughs> like, I'm, like, working with artists and venues and stuff. I'm redesigning the audio soundscape for Italy right now. <laughs> like, what? shut up. Like, Jesus, it's not real. Oh, he's name-dropping. Name he's name-dropping. <laughs> But he's, like, just doing fake photo video for TikTok artists, so... Sometimes big legacy artists, they just fucking hate us when we do those work. Bon Jovi. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said they're evil. <laughs> Not Bon Jovi's evil, you said legacy artists are evil. Yes. So often, Gray will be in interviews, and I'll have to actively shut him up from sounding like a dickhead or saying something illegal. He likes illegal. to be able to kick me. Uh <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a, like a good filter, so I just like say immediately what comes to mind. I'm talking about multiple crimes you committed. Yeah. Also, you can't <laughs> Okay, maybe like four bad things, but that's all, all, all said and done, a pretty good record for me. So, I'm not, I'm not, I, I just... I had this song that I loved that said I could never quite shut up, and I hates that song. I like the song. You like it? I do. I do. <laughs> Thanks. But, but, no, I do think it's, like, that's another main music thing that we want to do, which is, like, just people don't give a shit about rock lyrics anymore. They're just like, the vibe is right, so I fuck with it. And it's like, I, I'm i the vibe curator. I'm producing it. <laughs> but, like, fuck the lyrics. What I'm doing the is... Vibe. Yeah, uh, no. I'm, I'm vibe. He is sing-song. <laughs> also, right. <laughs> there you go. Great thing. No, but, but, um, but we both write lyrics, and we I produce in order to exemplify those lyrics. And I think it's funny, too, because I think a lot of our sound inspiration does come from, like, these older, not queer people. But then a lot of our lyrical inspiration, like, our favorite lyrical bands are 100% Boy Genius and Rubicon Surprise, which are both, like, queer-led, queer... Is Rubicon Surprise entirely queer? I can't remember. They just cut one of their members. I saw that. That was drama. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> the, the lead singer is a trans woman. Yeah. And they, I know that they have a couple of non-binaries in there, but I don't know if it's all of them. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely like a whole slew of the queers in that one. So, <laughs> so they got, they got everything. But they're, they're just such an awesome band. I'm obsessed with Rainbow Kings Rise and Hyde. Oh my God, that Hyde song. is about queer love. Yeah, it's, and it's a beautiful it's song. They, it's, it, it was really like distinct in me figuring out my queerness was Hyde and like coming to terms with it. Because losing queerness and coming back to it, a lot of it was quarantine and, and that song. And it was just like, um, and the, the, like, music video for that, it's like, it's all about, like, drag queens and, like, the struggles in, like, I think Kentucky. It's, like, a really uh, conservative state. And it's, like, their whole Kentucky's mission. Kentucky's a state? 
I'm gonna go yes. <laughs> it sure is. Okay, yeah, give, more <laughs> uh, give it more questions. <laughs> Missouri. That's a state. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Capital of Michigan. Lansing. Did I just no fucking way. eat that? Yeah. Oh my God. That's not fair. Michigan's his favorite state. It is. I still have Michigan. <laughs> Michigan is two states in one because it it's got the two states okay. it's one. No and fuck the Upper Peninsula. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. yeah. me and my homies hate the Upper Peninsula. Like What's your fucking problem? He's, he's never, never been. been in Michigan. He said every, every year he said it's been his, his, his big goal. <laughs> <laughs> his social relationship. I do. Exactly. It's two states in one. That's he such knows a blast. nobody from Michigan. Oh. Yes. One. <laughs> 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 Second one. Second. <laughs> I, was, I only lived there for like a few years. Why did I not notice? Wow. We're you guys introducing you guys to each other. <laughs> you guys are so connection. deeply connected to your Michigan roots. Wait, lower You're like upper like peninsula. You're spiritually from Arizona. Who do you That's think I am? <laughs> I don't know what that means. No one fucking lives question? on the upper peninsula. Wait, so, no, so are you also from the lower peninsula? Yeah, I'm from yeah, Arizona. So, everyone so is what happens lower. in the upper peninsula? Nothing. I don't know. Farm? Not I think I'm really stressed out. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, it's exactly like no woods. That's what I was gonna say. Like, uh, if I was there, I'd hiding. chop them all down so people could live there, and I would put Seven <laughs> Eleven. Dude, yeah. it's so far north though. Like, no one lives there because no one wants to live Canada. there. It's like fine. Is Canada I'm sure it's touching fine. Michigan? I think I've been there like Canada once. Canada does touch Michigan. The busiest. Uh, mm. so oh, I like it when you talk about history. I feel like you, you world, get a different. <laughs> Ambassador Bridge, which right. connects uh, Windsor with Detroit. I thought it would have been I, Niagara aren't even Falls. Worse. <laughs> no. I like that. It's got big water. <laughs> I've been there a couple does. times. I've been to Canada. I never been to Mexico, <laughs> but I've been to Canada. How about the other countries? Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I can miss them. Okay. I have been to Germany. I like cool. them. <laughs> They're probably my favorite country. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say favorite. I guess I don't know what my favorite country is. What's your favorite country? I feel like you have details. <laughs> you have to have it. Is it Croatia? Um, it's not Croatia. Okay. I am doing a research project on Croatia right now. And I, I did a research project in high school in Spanish on Panama. So <laughs> So he's probably just as like researched yeah. and educated as yeah, you are. <laughs> and I did it because one of my favorite Croatia. artists said his grandmother was from Panama. <laughs> Was it Tony O'Bellis? No! Queen 92. <laughs> oh, I met the other day. Oh, you met him? Yeah, I got to talk to him. I didn't even know that you talked to him. Um, that Toa Birds show, which I moshed with Renee Rapp, and I was like, hello, I didn't even oh. realize. And my manager was there, our manager, not mine alone, but our manager was there, and she was like, hey, what the fuck did you just do? Did you just shove Renee Rapp? And I was like, if she can't handle the mosh, don't be in the fucking mosh. <laughs> I love our manager. Oh, she's just so awesome. She's, she's turning 21 next week. Happy birthday, Isabella. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to come I come up in time or whatever. Uh, it'll go up on Saturday. Her Wait, birthday? It's up on Saturdays? Yeah, it's oh. on Saturdays. The day yeah, after. Yeah, some of us The day after. Sunday? Happy what do you mean? Why would I watch myself? Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shouting out. God. That was always what Shout we ran out. a twin yeah. YouTube channel when we were kids. We ran it together. I did all of the editing. And then Cray never watched the videos back. So I understand your struggle here. And I understand your uh, Do you Thank watch you. the video? Other than editing, do you watch the videos back? Uh, occasionally. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, when I need to find there. out a piece of, like, something that I know we said, I'll be like, fine. So, like, for the receipts. Yeah. yeah. The receipts. <laughs> I don't need the receipts. I, just I gotta say steal I trap up here. <laughs> <laughs> I say something and you have to believe me. I literally don't. You do. It, it's... Ava will back me up if they were here. Gaslighting Central, watch out. Yeah. I'm worried for you. Is. Are you safe? I'm a cancer. <laughs> hey, can you leave the room for any questions? No. Like, I need to ask a few questions. I can't. I also, I've been stuttering today. I have crippling OCD, so I always convince myself that whenever I stutter over like two or three words, that I have a stutter now and it's never going to go away for the rest of my life. And then I do that with like everything. It's so perfect. It's because I said lesbian goats. Now I'm going to be in my head about it and I'm going to mess up more words. Lesbian Goat Studio. Yeah. Lesbian, goat lesbian Goats give you OCD. OCD. Oh. Write it down. Yeah. Lesbian <laughs> Goats give you OCD. I don't think you ever picked a goat. Wow. I'm thinking about you don't like lesbians. I do like lesbians. You don't like lesbians. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be fictional, can they? Who's your fictional lesbian? Alex from Orange is the oh New Black. God. <laughs> oh my god. Orange is the New Black. You like right. crimes. <laughs> I, I love my crimes and I love my lesbians. <laughs> um, I can't be a friend or a fictional lesbian. 
You don't know like a single real lesbian. Is <laughs> <laughs> real lesbians? <laughs> He's, like He's Christian, Christian Stewart. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if she's bi. Oh shit. Yeah, you're pretty limited because I feel like a lot of them are pretty bi. Most of them come out and they just go bye. <laughs> <laughs> I know more lesbians. I gotta know more lesbians. Who's the one who made everyone gay? <laughs> Is she bi too? Uh, what? Ruby Rose. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you guys both do it. Yes. Yes. I'm, look, I've been JQ. <laughs> I've been Emma. <laughs> I, I, I have been Grant. I will continue to be. <laughs> I'm August and we're Raw Fools. We're Raw Fools. We're Raw Fools. Yeah. And is there anything you want to plug as we wrap up? Raw Fools on everything. Search at up Ruff, our band name and you can see us everywhere. At Raw Fools on Instagram. At Raw Fools Band on TikTok. I think that's the only important thing. <laughs> Amen. I'll stay. Oh, and we're on Spotify and Apple Music and all your streaming little platforms. Listen to Bats in the Attic for queer fucking music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Follow Outright on, oh my god, Instagram, TikTok, website, formerly known as Twitter. I do have a post to note for this and then I never remember it. You don't already you do follow, follow Outright? Time. That's so embarrassing. I do. You should be following Outright. I'm telling the viewers. Oh, wow. Let me plug you. Follow along. You're looking at me. I'm, I'm, this I'm, is embarrassing and humiliating. <laughs> I don't need to follow Outright. I have all the stories. <laughs> you're logged in. You can read our articles at outrightnewsmag.org. That's right, spelled W R I T E. Thank you and good night. Woo! <laughs>